Hello everyone, good morning, good to have you here. Paul Tranny in the house with the one and only Sean Riken, straight from Toronto, Canada. Good to have <laughs> yeah. you here, man. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's great. Definitely a different city than uh, Canada. Yeah. Sure. I... Definitely different. Very first time here, first oh, yeah. time in the Adobe Studios. Almost, almost first time in the States, actually. Wow. Uh, yeah, I went to Chicago once for a day. Oh, really? And then I flew back the next day, but and I, this is the longest amount of time that I've been in the States, probably. Into <laughs> it. Well, this is this is exciting for you. It's exciting for us to have you here. Uh, I'm sure the the, the in studio crowd agrees. We're, I don't know if you know this. We're in front of a uh, good two to three hundred people right oh, in front nice. of us, and of course our lovely Hi, audience. Two hundred people. <laughs> <laughs> we of course have Tim and Sam and Jennifer Thompson. Good to have you here, Noor, uh, Donovan. If you're joining us, uh, please. Wish Sean a nice welcome. He's uh, gonna show us some cool stuff. I, I'm really impressed with his work. Um, it's all uh, sort of career building, Photoshop, design, photo manipulation this morning for the next couple hours. Um, and then we'll get into some UX and UI this afternoon as well. Um, I don't know if we wanna click through a schedule, we can, uh, but this is kind of what's going on. So we're definitely happy you're here. Uh, so again, thank you to Kathleen for uh, the previous 30 minutes. We'll be reviewing those uh, creative challenge designs in a little bit. Then for the next two hours, we have Sean. Then we have the XD challenge with Andrea, which will be fun. And then we get into uh, designing for any screen uh, with Stan Rapp. It's also his first time here. So uh, lots of firsts. <laughs> so welcome Wayne and Tiffany and Gaurav and everyone. Fantastic. Welcome, yeah. How you doing? You ready to... Yeah, ready to rock. Yeah, what is the plan? Already, so, I'm like, you already got my attention with this image, by the way. I'm already like... Boom. Sucked in. <laughs> so, I'm going to try and recreate um, one of these pieces uh, live for you guys today. So, I have a few examples of this series and I really wanted to add to it. And I thought, hey, what a, what a better place to do it uh, than on live. So. This was the um, first piece that I did in this collection, uh, and then we also then I had the second piece here, which is a part of my yellow series. Um, I like to target colors, so I always put them in color groups. Uh, and then this was a third um, that was done. So we're gonna try and recreate something like this. Uh, it uses a lot of 3D elements um, and it's just really fun to create and I think that everybody uh, will learn some lighting and shadowing from this. Yeah, and definitely. Yeah, totally, mm -hmm. I'm really into this. Um, and I wanna brag about you and maybe we could talk a little bit more about like kind of what you do. Uh, but feel free to check out Sean's work um, and maybe we can kind of switch to my screen but you can click through uh, through the info, just click Sean Riken right there, follow him on Behance, and you can see kind of more of his work. Um, but do you do this kind of typically for fun or for clients, or yeah, what's the case? So here? right now, um, like m these images are for a passion project. So I do a lot of um, side work as well, like logo design, web design, all that kind of stuff, but this is more of my uh, passion and my release, so I'm always, uh, I'm always designing something new and getting those creative ideas off the plate and this also helps me enhance my skills and creates a routine which helps me uh, build my career which is nice. So. Ah, cool. Can we <laughs> Finally Sean switched to Windows. Yeah, yeah, no for sure. Yeah, Oh, were you on? Uh, were you on a? Uh, yeah, a I was on. Before? I was on Mac before, and I uh, finally switched over. Uh, people uh, noticed, and I've been slowly getting into PC. It's a little bit different with the hotkeys and everything, mm -hmm. but uh, it's easy to pick up on. Eventually, I still am getting used to the whole uh, layout of a PC, though. But <laughs> I'm getting there. Yeah, well, and it kind of doesn't matter. I think, you know, Photoshop's still going to be the same. Um, but basically, you kind of do this for fun and just kind of like therapy for yourself and everything. And then you're just kind of seeing where it goes. Because yeah. like, you, next, you know, you're working at home, like private of your own house, mm -hmm. you know, on this awesome stuff. And the next thing you know, you're here at Adobe showing us how it's done. So, so showing you all the tips and tricks. Yeah, man. Giving away all my secrets. Yeah, so this is news. So you're gonna, is is the the idea for today, you're gonna take like same eyeball type image and kind of like do yeah, a so, similar composite? So what I kind of thought of yesterday was, I thought that this 
flower image looked really interesting and I thought maybe I could put an eyeball on the inside of all of these. So it kind of like graphs around that eye. And I thought, you know, that's probably, probably a pretty easy thing to do. It's just a nice little quick um, selection just around here, but I'm just gonna jump on in here. And mm -hmm. what I normally like to do is, uh, I like to open up my extensions here. Um, and then this is my uh, Pixel Squid ex extension. And what it does is it allows me to import um, 3D objects easily. Uh, this can be done in like Dimension and you have a lot more uh, flexibility with a program such as Dimension. Um, but this is what I use because I love Photoshop. It's just one thing that uh, mm. I'm, I think I'm addicted to it. Oh, yeah, we have, this yeah. is basically, consider this your support group. We yeah. are all in your support group. Uh, Cleve, by the way, we do see your question. We'll be basically doing all of that in terms of isolating part of that image, mm -hmm. scaling, resizing that. This is really cool, because I don't know if we've actually talked about Pixel Squid on Adobe Live before which is fascinating. So I don't know if you could just oh, give us a quick overview. Oh yeah, no. So I use a lot, I really love using Pixel Squid um, because of the fact that um, it just basically gives me that Look 3D that. kind of, you Look can just that. move it around anywhere that you want and then it will just boom, enhance it on my Photoshop and put it in the direction that it needs to be. So I really, um, I really like it because yeah. I don't have to cut around all these eyeballs so, and everything. It just makes you it so don't, much faster. You don't, so. you don't have to find the model and then try nope. to get 3D software, like render it out and do all this no, stuff. No, there's so, so many, squid. there's so many different things. Like let's let's just load a random object here, and I'll show you. Kind of uh, just even have bags. You can uh, they have bags. They have chairs, tables. So if anybody ever needs like subtle elements, mm -hmm. it's so easy to use these kind of things. Yeah. And uh, I like to, uh, then you can just boost the resolution after, turn off those shadows if you want to adjust them yourself, and it basically uh, yeah. enhances it. I like this. I, it, mm -hmm. it really does like, it, especially in this specific case where you like, you need a specific angle for an object. This works out perfect. It doesn't require any 3D software. Of course, you could get like maybe more advanced and dive into like, we have Adobe Dimension, um, which allows you to like, you know, bring in all your 3D elements and mix them 2D and 3D as well. But this is almost even easier if you just want to stay within Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So what I normally do um, when I'm masking is I'm going to bring up this eyeball, but I like to put the opacity down to around 68% or around 70% or so, just so that I can see, give myself a perspective of what's going on behind that image. Um, I'm going to pull up my Pixel Squid tab again. I'm just going to enhance that a little bit. So, Ooh, it's a that's a um, uh, looks like that's a smart object. Yep, yeah. So, so it's linked back to that that Pixel that, Squid model. Yeah, and it just keeps going and going. And you can, if I ever need to enhance it with all the lighting and everything, then I can just do it right in that process, and it makes it makes it real really easy. Yeah. Um, so basically what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit holding, sh uh, well not holding shift anymore yeah. because that is, that, <laughs> they changed that. And they they that, did. That threw me and off for and we actually gave you the ability to change it back because the most recent update you can, that's actually oh, a preference per to change it back if you want to. I'm, I'm like, don't, you, it, just get used to it. Yeah. It's I easy. Know. Why mm -hmm. do we even have to hold shift down in the first place? Yeah. Very rare cases do you need to distort something, so mm -hmm. I, I'm okay with the recent, with the, uh, the change. Yeah, it was definitely, uh, I, lo I love the fact that you can just stretch it however you want now, and it, it makes it actually a lot more flexible. It was just really hard to get uh, used to, because I was so used to just hitting yeah. shift there. Yeah. Um, but I'm just going to position this right so that I know that this is the area that I'm going to put in. So I'm going to put it right there, I think, and I kind of want to get rid of all this around here. So mm -hmm. normally what I do is I will create a layer mask and I will hide all instantly. Um, and then from there I go to my brushes and I always have my, I always work with low brush settings, but in this case I'm gonna work with higher brush settings because I'm just kind of painting my eyeball back okay. in the position that I need it to be. And then I just paint it roughly for now, because um, you can always fix it later. Mm -hmm. Maybe. So I'm gonna go right 
And like Tim said, uh, we're gonna do a random or not so random giveaway in about 20 minutes. Some sticker mule, mule stickers. And then don't forget about the design challenge that's going on. Um, just go ahead and click the challenge tab and we'll review those in about an hour. So another kind of cool feature that I really like that I find that people don't use as often um, is shift with brushes. So if you shift with your brushes, you can actually do straight, exactly right. straight lines. And not many people shift with their brushes when they're cutting no. things out. And I feel like it works very well. Um, it's how I actually speed through a lot of my cutting. Normally I don't use any selection tools for my cutting. It just makes it look a little bit more uh, realistic when you do do it with brushes rather than uh, the selections. And you have the, I like how you have that layer set to like 60% or so, just because you can you can see what's underneath it. Yeah. And but you, you're technically you're painting with pure white right now. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just really can't really notice it um, up until you turn the opacity back up again. Then you're like, uh oh. <laughs> and um, you gotta enhance it from that point. But and I totally agree with you. Like I don't even hold down the shift key. I forget about that all the time. Oh uh, yeah, the holding shi down shift with a brush, click another spot, and it just goes boom right line. across right across the screen. And uh, yeah, it makes it really uh, really useful. Um, um, another recent tip uh, we broadcast here is um, if your brush size disappears. Has this happened to you? Uh, I think it's, yeah, yeah it's because the uh, caps lock is on. Perfect. So if caps lock is on, then your brush is basically like, Just it's hidden, it yeah. So I, I, I've run into so many issues where I'm like, where's my brush? But what I, do I, do? I have a secondary keyboard on the side and that <laughs> one's on caps lock. So I'm just, oh, <laughs> and I don't that really, would drive yeah, you yeah, so I'm just looking all over on this keyboard for it. <laughs> I just cannot find it. I, I didn't know that till like earlier this year by the way, and I've been using Photoshop forever. I'm like, ah. Oh. There's so many. But I'd go out and buy a new laptop. <laughs> it's just the, I just, this is the shift key. What's the problem? <laughs> on, on my uh, my Mac. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. We probably helped out Jonathan. Uh, yeah. Because if you help uh, out uh, one person from going crazy with that, yeah. then we've won. Yeah. We've done our job. I hope we helped you, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably like, I was about to throw up my computer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just kind of like, I'm just clicking around here right now, just kind of bringing back that eyeball in there. I and you just like toggling with the brackets, the bracket keys. Yeah, yeah, there. I just, I like use the, uh, yeah, the bracket keys are, uh, are probably my most used thing. So when you use your bracket keys, you can expand or uh, mm -hmm. decrease your brush size. And it just, it just makes, it's so much easier doing bigger areas at the top. Mm -hmm. So around here, I probably wouldn't be using a, uh, a bigger brush, but up here I definitely will be. Yeah. This is the exact same way I work too. Like you're just using a mouse. You mentioned earlier, sometimes you'll just use the touchpad on your on your. Uh, oh yeah, this is too. actually how I started Photoshop. Cause um, when you wanna learn Photoshop, it's not really about like, you're not gonna become the best person in the entire world instantly. <laughs> and it's all about routine. Um, so. I wanted to start my routine using a trackpad for some random reason. Um, and then I moved up to a mouse and I said, why did I start on a trackpad? Uh, but I wanted to really work on my uh, focusing skill and a focusing ability. So I was able to um, really know the boundaries of my canvas yeah. because I'm only able to stretch it out so far. Mm -hmm. um, so it, I, Kind of got painful when you were doing like a selection and all of a sudden you reach the edge of your trackpad oh, and the edge yeah. of the frame and you're like, uh oh. <laughs> but well, and I honestly, I, I really think there's like there's like no wrong way to do this. Stuff. No, no, I, like, I don't think that there is a wrong way either. Um, anybody can do. I actually know um, some artists who still do a digital concept first, no lighting and shadowing, and they would bring it over to pen and paper and paint all the shadows on themselves because they don't know how to use the brushes or anything like that in oh, Photoshop. Really? So they, they print out kind of like an oh, outline and funny. then paint it all themselves that is, using paintbrush. That is wild. Yeah, but I'm a, like, hey. Hey, it works, works right? Yeah, his like piece, you... their pieces turn out pretty well. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. And it, it, you can't argue with the end result. And then you, you have awesome, then hey, kind of like it. a, um, 
then you have kind of like a, uh, a hard copy of your work too, which is yeah. always a, a nice thing to have. So I'm just gonna kind of erase around here, make it a little bit softer because this is actually the area where I'm probably going to be um, most likely gonna be blending colors into. So it doesn't have to be the sharpest um, area. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just gonna go around here. Into it. And then, so yeah, and I like everybody, feel free to throw out your different ways for selecting, because yeah. Manav mentions like using the magnetic lasso tool, which works well as, as well. Some people, if you're good enough to use the actual lasso, which is actually the, that is a super skill. hard. That is a, that's something that you want it's, to throw on your resume. Yeah, <laughs> you can use the lasso it, tool. Yeah. Uh, it's like so specific. I know, like, I'm, I'm, my hands are too shaky. Oh, that's the okay. problem, is that yeah. like, I'm always just like, Moving I, it so slow that like my hands are just all over. Oh man! <laughs> so I'm like super excited because like um, we've talked about Photoshop for the iPad, so it is coming out. We're working on it. Oh, that. But is selecting is so much easier. Working like on the actual image, like with like ver Apple Pencil. Oh. So that's the yeah. one. the lasso tool. The least used, the hardest to use on your desktop becomes the easiest. And, and the biggest advantage when, you, when you're working on an iPad is what I've noticed. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, that. I'm really excited about the iPad app. Once and, I announced that, I was oh like, man, oh. that's a game changer. We have because so many exciting the, things. The apps that um, were out on the iPad and iPhone before, like mm -hmm. they were kind of, they were, they were good for mobile. I love them for mobile, but for something advanced like, like this, uh, it was kind of a little bit of a, uh, yeah, you just couldn't. You just couldn't do it. It was like pieces of Photoshop, but mm -hmm. now we're working. We have the but, full. Oh yeah, like that, the actual <laughs> code base. So that's a whole thing. That's gonna be a game. And game. it's gonna be so exciting because like we're working. You're gonna you're gonna be able to seamlessly move around from desktop to to iPad. It's gonna be Ooh, awesome. That's gonna I'm be excited cool. about everything. <laughs> probably because I'm on general. my second cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Probably what's doing it, but in general, I'm excited about everything. And this is actually looking pretty cool. And I love how literally like you're using like one tool. Yeah, oh, like, I, I just... try and, yeah, my brush is my main kind of, like I have limited my process to um, a small amount of tools. And it just has to do with just, you know, this is relaxing for me, mm -hmm. right? Like what I'm doing right yeah, now is therapy. just relaxing, hanging out, just editing a little image. It's, it's a nice little feel. And with somebody like myself with who goes through anxiety, mm -hmm. this is definitely a relief. And Photoshop has always been a uh, good tool for that for me. Well, we appreciate you being here, even having some anxiety and <laughs> what do we do? I felt bad that we like put you in front of all these people. We just broadcast you to them. Yeah. You got some, we'll just get a Brian. Yeah. But it's awesome because you we see this type of work like online and it's fun just peeking under the hood and seeing how you put it together. So we're just like honored to have you here, man. This is good. Uh, Carol, no release date yet on Photoshop for the iPad. We're still working on it, of course. It's a big task taking an application that, uh, you know, what is 27 years old, taking that code base and <laughs> we want to do it right. And I, everything I've seen and all that stuff's doing it right. So I'm excited. I will wait just to make sure it's not a rushed product. You know, I'll oh, wait yeah. for the right implementation of the tools. So that looks really good, man. So that's kind of like my rough kind of cut right here. I just kind of tapped here and there around small stuff. So you can tell it's pretty rough in these corners. But again, since I'm blending this into the flower, I don't need to worry about that kind of stuff. So I use clip masks. I'm not sure if anybody has ever mm -hmm. experienced these, um, but they are very helpful. And I always use my brushes. So I'll do the eye drop tool. I'll eye drop the color selection. And then I, again, back to the brush brush it on in there. Nice. And you are painting on, that's your painting on that. This is okay, only gotcha. in the eye. Only in the eye. Yeah. So if and I, is that a, okay, good. You have an opacity, like 50% opacity mm -hmm. with that selected color. Yeah. So I, I, I actually, like, this is actually a really high opacity for me. I normally work with like mm -hmm. 10%. And it's just because you can actually blend like really nice and just get all that mm -hmm. depth that you need. I'm just going to keep using this red because it seems to be blending really nicely around yeah. the image. 
So now I kind of study the um, overall uh, highlights of the image. So I want to know exactly where the lighting is. Um, so I'm going to darken this a little bit using levels so I can kind of tell a little bit more where they're coming from. But I think it's actually just coming from directly above. So this is almost okay. the correct lighting um, on the eye already. Okay. So you're using levels just to kind of check. Did you actually apply that level? Yeah, so I applied okay. that levels just because, uh, well, to me, visually, it looked uh, pretty light and overexposed. So I just wanted okay. to darken it and create that kind of mystery. Now I'm just going to rotate my canvas because the perspective looks better this way almost. Ooh, yeah. And uh, now I'm going to fix this a little bit. And the, here's a huge tip and trick that I absolutely love, unlinking your mask and being able to move the eyeball wherever you want with your cut. Mm-hmm. I so, want to just track you around the room. So now with Pixel you Squid. Oh, no. <laughs> now with Pixel Squid, I'm able to update my my look and view of oh, that was the wrong direction because I flipped my canvas. You guys liking this, Joshua Jordan? Isn't this nope. isn't that cool? There we go. There we go, that should be the decent angle. Pixel nice. Squid plugin. Fantastic. So I'm just gonna squeeze it in there a little bit and then I'm gonna finally get rid of those shadows and boost up that resolution. I like to work with a low resolution first, otherwise your document is just whew, right okay. straight through the roof with your size and you wanna keep it low. You always wanna keep it kind of small. Uh, I find that a lot of my composites hit around a gig. Of, oh, wow. of how big they wow. are uh, with all the lighting, brushes, and everything. Because um, I do a lot of uh, camera raw, too, in my images. So you'll see that um, okay. eventually. Um, I like it. It looks like Joshua's loving this. Good to hear. I think uh, Hitchin brings up a good point, too. I think that's fun to talk about because you're matching the lighting. And then I'm sure we'll get into, even today and tomorrow, the overall whether whether you know one image is smooth versus you mm. need to add noise and like yeah, all yeah, no, the different details. Definitely, blurring is, so this edge is too sharp to be in a composite. So the ruling is like you actually have to blur your mask. So you can basically just link that. Actually, no, I'm just gonna rasterize this because I didn't do the front of and the And do eyeball. whatever, you, we don't want, I don't want to screw you up. So <laughs> I don't want to. Oh like, no no I, I no I I love playing around in Photoshop. Oh, yeah. I think it's all just just playing around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna blur these edges around because it's it needs to have that depth of field and you need to kind of create that depth of field. And the problem uh, that I had when I started was I was always trying to make my images look um, very very like sharp and realistic looking. And that was where I went wrong was because they don't always have to look sharp and realistic looking. They just have to look like they're in focus. Yeah, and they... And, they... and that's how, yeah, that's how okay. it, to make a look kind of like a realistic vibe to it. But so any sharp edge, I normally just completely uh, get rid of. Because you know, if you zoom up on that flower too, you notice that there's no sharp edges mm, around yeah. there either. It's all pixels and in there, and it's all blurred out nicely. Mm -hmm. So when I do that with the eyeball, now the eyeball matches this kind of blur around the yeah. edge a little bit. And again, yeah. I think a lot of this is really just like how how to see. Mm -hmm. You know. So. I mean, like it's, just, it's one thing knowing how to blur, and another thing like knowing <laughs> how much. Yeah, exactly. You know? uh, blur tool is definitely my uh, one of my favorites. I put out a nice little seventy percent. Sometimes it's better at fifty, to be totally honest, because mm -hmm. then you're not overdoing it right away, and you have a little bit more control. So the lower your settings are when you start, the more control you will have over those brushes mm -hmm. and settings. Yeah, looks like Gaurav wants you to use the iris blur. Uh, I I can use can. the iris, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a, a blur effect, <laughs> which I just think that's fun that you said that. <laughs> Lena, hello. Want to welcome you. Also, if you're if you're new or uh, uh, re recently joining us, want to welcome you. And of course, a long term long time friends. Uh, less than five minutes, we'll do a random giveaway. That's what Chat and Win's all about. You have about uh, uh, what like 50 minutes or so to. Uh, 
check out the challenge tab. We'll review your designs because we want to see your work on this. Screen. Yeah, it'd be really cool. So and uh, this would be good to get your feedback on. Yeah, too. I'd love to get my feedback. I love checking out everybody's work. It's like, it's like my favorite thing. I go to like art museums and I will always just look at old pieces of how this industry started. Like, yeah. <clears throat> and it's so big now, it's massive. So I'm just gonna use uh, levels on this eye a little bit, darken it up a little bit. Bring it back down again. All right, perfect. And then that's looking pretty blended to me right now. And if you zoom out, it just, oh, that's looking really good actually. Just complimenting my own work right now. You're like, hey, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so I always crop my canvas um, to uh, eight by 10. And uh, this is just because uh, my platform is Instagram and that's the one that I grew on. And that's what I use as my portfolio actually. Didn't want to pay for a website and Instagram mm -hmm. is free. So <laughs> so if anybody's developing their career, go the free route. Go go yes, Instagram. This, this is largely about also we want to get those tips, like your, mm -hmm. you know, sort of creative career tips. And again, this is even the size is the largest size you can go yep. right with. Yep, for it. This is the tallest size that you can go is that for Instagram. Eight, eight by ten, is that what you yep. said? Eight by ten. And then if you want to do stories, then you basically crop it to uh, sixteen by nine and then reverse it. Mm-hmm. And this will instantly make it uh, so that you can share it on a story, Snapchat, or whatever app that you use to share photos, those kind of lengthy photos on. Very into it. And we can talk about this later, but uh, you, always, you also have your work on, on Behance. Mm -hmm. And you can actually create a, an Adobe portfolio from your mm -hmm. Behance. Uh, yeah, I use, uh, work. that's a that's an amazing um, platform for uh, portfolio for full projects. I love to put my full series on there, so I put some small snippets on other things. Mm -hmm. But then that's where I collect all the pieces is on uh, the Behance. So I have some series on there. The Sad Nature series is uh, one of them, and you can kind of scroll through it. And I have videos, the process videos, all that at the bottom. And uh, yeah, can you can we switch to? J Phil's, can we switch to my screen? But this is amazing. I think you do such a good job, again, just on, in terms of like career advice. You've posted, you know, periodically, you just post our mm. Instagram regularly, and then once you have a series done, here it is. Yeah. This is like, totally good to see. Just everything. Just like little. this stuff, interested in process video, into it. Yeah, I do a process video for everything now, uh, and Photoshop does it for, basically for me. It's uh, the timeline uh, app in here, and mm -hmm. I just create the process video using that. Oh, okay. And that I works. just hide all, I'll do the squares, and I'll just basically hide all my layers and then reveal them all one by Have one. Have them pop yep. up layers. And okay. then I export it as a video, and. Uh, actually works out really well because I always thought that I had to bring it into like a secondary software. Mm -hmm. But then I started editing videos in Photoshop and I, I discovered the power of Photoshop even more, uh -huh. even further. Well, although I do, I, I you know, I, one thing that I actually like to see maybe is to have it record what you're doing behind the scenes. Yeah. I've, but there's two sides to that because that would be like hard on your computer if some processing is happening. Mm -hmm. I need, you need all the power, you all you all you can get on this one gig <laughs> oh, image, yeah. right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because there was Painter, I don't know if everybody remember it was Painter. Painter had the ability to, I don't know if it's record your session or it, or you had the ability to take the recording later, but that was actually a feature. So maybe if you turn it on and show that process. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'd like to show you these fireworks going on behind us, because that means it's time for chat and win. Who's gonna win today? Let's check yeah, it out. Good. Chat and win. All you have to do is say something in chat, preferably in English. English and is... we will go ahead and pull a name. Welcome back everyone. Yes, say stickers, because that's actually what you will be entered to win if you say something in chat, just like Steven and Angel and Kath Catherine is doing. And Jennifer and Jessica and yeah, there's people so are like, Hi, many. Hey, <laughs> hey, come on, A, I think you could do better than one letter. Yeah. <laughs> 
But again, we just need to make sure it's not yeah. a cat walking on a keyboard. We need to make sure there's a human there. <laughs> and we will uh, give you 100 stickers. 100 stickers? Yeah, imagine what you can do with those. Yeah, I know what I would do with 100 stickers. <laughs> I would just I would just start tagging my neighborhood. Yeah, yeah just, and just everywhere. start putting them, put yeah, things, put them yeah. everywhere. <laughs> put them in birthday cards at that point. <laughs> you have so many just, stickers. Just everywhere. <laughs> be into it so again that's from sticker mule by the way just pretty awesome of them to uh help us out and it's really just a way to honor you our guests and want to honor lydia deluca congratulations, congratulations. You, lydia. Win, you win some stickers here they are <laughs> i'm handing them through my computer yeah. to you you handing them Boop. to you <laughs> hands will come you out get it? there Boop. there they all are but lydia we will contact you through behance <laughs> We'll send you a message and uh, give you those uh, for free. And just to remind everybody, you can get uh, like 10 stickers for like a buck. So if you yeah. want to design your own, whether it's, you know, cool artwork in Photoshop, just use this code, Adobe Live 19 Maybe you'll see some stickers out there for my work on it. Yeah, just like, again, little ones <laughs> yeah. of, of work you've already made. You know, 10 for a buck, just yeah. you know, have them up. Like, That's perfect. That's actually really good. I think you should, like, maybe when you meet people, you shake their hand, then and you slap stick it. it to their you, hand. you put stick it on the inside and you slap it on. Okay, okay slap it on, on the their back. back. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> just peace on but, their back the whole time. Yeah, that's, that's for everyone, just to say that we appreciate you hanging out with us, Daniel, and everyone. And, of course, Lydia, our winner. We're all winners today because we just watch you work and uh, start taking all your Instagram followers. <laughs> just joking. I'm joking. But you are working at... You're not really actually. This is this is a good point because you're working at the actual like size of the photo currently, right? Because you haven't cropped it yet. I just. Uh, oh, you just did. Yeah, so I, I did crop it down um, a little bit. Uh, I was working on the actual size, but mm -hmm. normally at this point, um, I just kind of like to. It just determines on what you want the actual perspective to be. So since I wanted it more to be. Um, kind of closer up. It was a really wide angle kind of photo and I wanted to bring it right into that picture creating that kind of focus more on the eyeball here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, now that it's sideways, it I've kind of changed the uh, lighting direction from being up top to now it's on the side. So now I have to just highlight basically right around here uh, on the eye, which looks to me already pretty highlighted. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll probably just balance it out with actually just using more shadows at the bottom. Because if I already have a nice little highlight here, then I don't really need to enhance anything too much. I use, yeah, brushes are probably my main tool for composites. They're really, uh, they're really flexible with things. I even have like, I even draw grass with brushes a lot mm -hmm. and uh, I don't have many brushes, I don't think. I, I think I only have two sets. Oh yeah, yeah, the general brushes and the grass brushes. And that that's only because uh, the grass brush was, I think, recently removed from the actual uh, general brushes there. Mm -hmm. So I just said, oh, I, I like that grass. I'll, I'll download that again. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm kind of the same way. And I do want to welcome Enomis Folly. It's your first day. From what I understand, might be your first time here, if it is. Welcome. Welcome. Good it's also my first time too. Exactly. We're firsties. Sean, Sean's first day too. You're part of a good group. That's awesome. But how, and actually Marshall asked kind of how you got into these or interested or stumbled upon. How, how did you get into this like idea of combining these two elements? Um, it like just was like I was, uh, I started as a photographer and um, I really had um, a design kind of sense and I really loved it and I have a, a strong sense for creativity. I even tried music at one point. Okay. Uh, I played the piano, didn't know a single note, but I could play the piano, but I didn't know any anything. Oh. It was just all ear, all uh, oh, listening wow. and, and all that kind of stuff. But I just kind of made um, a creativity my routine. So I dabbled in pho or, uh, photography, and then all of a sudden I went into this kind of composite work, and, and then I started testing my skills even more um, just by making it a further routine over and over again. I think that it's just pure routine. That's literally what, it, okay. what Photoshop is. And if you literally touch upon, you don't have to sit and do it every day. I'm not mm -hmm. saying just like wake up in the morning and be like, I have to Photoshop, mm -hmm. um, but 
like if you should... once or twice a week, you know, it's, it's it'll it'll boost your skill. You'll you'll notice it. You notice a difference at that point. Yeah, definitely. And that's honestly that's why we have the daily creative challenges, just to mm. kind of give give people something to it's, do. Yeah, inspire. Just like some place to get started. Otherwise, you're just kind of piddling around. And yeah. by the way, right here, by the way, challenge right here, the challenge tab. And uh, today we're gonna be swapping image backgrounds to create a unique composite image. Um, we will be reviewing those on Discord in, as the clock shows, about 54 minutes. So that's one way to get involved. And I really like what you do. So some people are saying, okay, first I wanna say, you know, welcome everybody who's new. Nick's mm -hmm. sixth day here. Leah Steiner's first day as well. Welcome. Welcome. Love but, uh, you know, you could download a thousand <laughs> <laughs> packs of brushes and yeah. all these things. And I love how you work because I'm not overwhelmed. It's like mm -hmm. almost a lesson in simplicity. Like, let's focus on what we're doing in the image. Let's grab a brush. Let's, you yeah, know what I'm not, saying? Yeah, like, I'm not it clicking doesn't, around all it, over the place. I, try, I like to keep it simple because, like, again, I have so much stuff in my head already. Mm -hmm. I don't like to put a lot of stuff in front of me either. Yeah, and the, the brush isn't gonna make this better. It's gonna be you knowing where to click that makes this better, I yeah, feel. Yeah, exactly. And, and the other day, actually, I discovered the um, the edit toolbar option, and you can actually hide um, a lot of the tools that you don't use. Mm -hmm. So I've no, I started, you know, Getting rid of the single column selection yeah, and like, all because I've never yeah, used I've never I, used yeah, that a million years. I would never touch I've that. Never I, I would just use you, a regular if, one. If you do, great. <laughs> yeah, if, if you have, have that. I skill, usually then. I usually go on people's other people's photoshops and then I I hide I just hide <laughs> like one or two like the selection tool. <laughs> my, uh, mess with them. Yeah, my my uh, when he first downloaded Photoshop, everything was hidden for him um, and he only had the selection tool. He's, oh, like, I, I like, he's like, I don't like. He's like, I don't like. And I'm usually like, like, you can't oh, do anything you, on it. And yeah. I'm like, well, your tool, <laughs> your entire toolbar is hidden. And then he he absolutely loves it now. He, I, I'm he usually like, it. you gotta. Did you upgrade your subscription? Like, are you up <laughs> yeah. to date? Because if yeah. you start taking away tools, if you if you're not updated, can you expand Photoshop a little bit more just so we don't see the? Huh? Oh, there we go. That was easy. Thank you. Yeah, nice little double click there. That's a Windows feature, I think. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, Carol, just so you know, just like you're you're chatting on Behance right now, uh, Discord's more of a community to chat and continue the conversation. So, Discord's the platform. Discord is out. the platform. Yeah. Discord's becoming a a huge platform. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to bring in uh, the water drops that I had before. Um, so, I already saved. Previously saved an image. Uh, the biggest part about, uh, like a huge part about design, is finding the right images, and that normally takes me hours. So I didn't want to do that to you today. I didn't want to do that to all of you today with searching the internet for images. So I prepared all mm -hmm. of my images. Um, but these are like you know stuff that you can get off of Adobe Stock. They offer a lot of you know. Uh, stuff like this, like PNG images, uh, overlays, uh, effects, everything that you can use for, for your imagery. So if you're looking for like light leaks, all that stuff, definitely a good place to go. Um, so I'm just going to use this little drop right here. And I think I'm just gonna put it in the corner maybe. And this is good, so, you know, maybe you got this on like, or wherever, like Adobe Stock or some other place. I like how you found an asset that has like 50 drops. Oh yeah. Like yeah. look for those. Like <laughs> yeah. it, sometimes yeah. I just want a simple splat, but I'll find these assets that are like 50 splats in one and that's just my resource I use yeah, all the and then, time. And then you just save it, uh, save it in a, li a little library on like mm -hmm. a, a hard drive or something and then you have them for the rest of your life. So that's what I always do. I have like a little library um, on a hard drive at home I think I'm actually gonna put this one coming from the actual eye itself. Oh yeah, and make it red. Just kidding. <laughs> make it, make it. But um, yeah, we need to, I don't know if you've uh, used um, Creative Cloud Libraries. Yes, uh, I have uh, my 3D character up here that I just started yeah. and how to use that with like the characters. I'm still trying to figure it out yeah, I can, um, I can show you like later. Oh, nice. These would be really it's cool. It's really interesting, and it's it's just in an interesting space right now because we have Adobe Dimension, which is a three D mm -hmm. three a separate three D app. But then we have like Fuse. We basically purchased a company that does a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we integrated some of that technology into Photoshop, but we also have a Dimension. 
Mm -hmm. um, I would like to three. see these characters in Dimension, quite frankly. Yeah. Like, give me no, a separate same. interface yeah. to control. Combine them. Combine both of the software. If you cool. can, yeah, like Fuse, exactly. Because mm -hmm. like they're almost some, a, something very like similar. that. They're very, very similar uh, programs, I find. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm just going to put that opacity down in these layers. Probably about 80, 80 maybe, yeah. I'll put it around 80. That's 80 for me. <laughs> 78 is 80. I, I, <laughs> as, as close as possible. So I'm going to just make these smaller here so that I can actually work with them. And now I need to select this drop. And what I do is then I just like select inverse and I go layer, layer mask and hide selection. Oh, yeah, hide selection. Yeah. And there you go. Now I have my solo little drop here. Makes it easy for me to move around. I still have the ability to draw on all my other drops still. Um, so if I ever need to bring them back, then I, then I can do that. But I don't think I'll be bringing them back right now. I like it. Yeah, the Discord is kind of like the consumer version of Slack. So it's mm. similar to Slack. So thank you for mentioning that. Robbie Doyle says this is rad. I agree. You're going to have this is this is going to be in your dreams and or nightmares. Yeah, yeah. I, I have one on my wall, so it's in my nightmares kind of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At home, the yeah. eye you follows wake up in the morning and you're like <gasps> Like, yeah, you know, you don't really. You're like, not really why used why to do having. I feel like I'm being watched? <laughs> yeah. is, this, is this big printout? <laughs> so I like to stack overlays on top of each other. Um, just creates that kind of extra, I don't know, extra boldness that it needs to it. And, and since I'm using overlay, it's always hard to. Um, actually get that boldness to it because it takes all the colors so from you behind and did you, du you duplicated it yeah so i duplicate yeah. it uh i do that yep. using uh if you do alt you can literally just move whatever layer that you want and it'll go under over you can just keep doing alt and it will push them all there for oh, you oh and it i've never done that you just hold really? down the alt key alt and drag it duplicates a layer yeah yeah alt and you can drag it wherever you want so let's just say i want it at the bottom of an image so mm -hmm. now i just scroll it now it's at the bottom. But it's that also does make sense at, actually. Because if you thing. hold down even in other apps, let me just see. Just like in Illustrator, mm -hmm. if you hold down the Alt key and drag an item on the you, document, you, you can even do it right here too. You can even drag. So that's what I'm doing. It as well. Uh, even on Photoshop, this even if you select your actual item itself, you can also. Yeah, I would. I do Command J, which is to duplicate the layer. So it's mm. like. Jump. Yeah, also good. Uh, yeah. There's so many techniques to do. Uh, like we were saying, there's so many techniques to do one thing. I'm right? just glad to see you stack up multiple layers because I've done that before. And <laughs> unless somebody has like a better way, but so you have an o a layer set to overlay. This is the way of like punching it up, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. And that's what I do. Maybe there's, if somebody has a, other ideas, love to hear it. We're a community. Always yeah. love hearing the Sh tips. Share, the, share all the secrets. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. There's no wrong way of doing things. So I noticed that there's a little bit of a shadow under here. I'm just kind of erasing that right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that again on this side. And I like to use groups, so I will group it and then I will clip mask into a group. Love it. So now this is my lighting that I like to clip mask into here and I can just enhance all my lighting now using that group yes and now those two layers are still oh, these two layers are still in here but now it's just a little it cleans up my document a little bit bad for naming layers by the way i name them all after after i'm done uh because yeah. i just find that that is a was is my time consuming process is figuring out what i want to name my layers so I do recommend it if you do find that you're um, <clears throat> that you lose layers quite often, but I normally work up and I don't go back down again. Okay. Yeah. And you're not. Thank you for 
Just like being honest with how you work. Because yeah, I think a lot of people are like, name your layers. Yeah, and no. I, and part of me is like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, But then that kind of makes me like forget all the time. So I mean, you're too busy. Yeah, yeah, I'm too exactly. busy focusing on this. Yes, if I have to share this PSD, I'm not going to be a jerk. I'm going to probably name and organize everything appropriately. Just don't be a jerk. It's like clean up your house before somebody comes over. Exactly. So <laughs> this is normally what it looks like, like at the... Oh, at the end here. Let's just go to, so I actually, if you go down, I'll name it, F, uh, I'll name my actual layer just two two characters. So this one's FB, um, and then FB Glow, FB Glow, so that I know that that's mm. tied to my FB layer. Um, it's not really, I don't know what FB stands for, I just hit two random letters, then there's oh. BB, so then it's BB Glow, BB Shadow, so that okay. I know that all these things are, are linked. Uh, this probably actually meant like back butterfly and front butter, uh, butterfly. That's what I'm assuming. But yeah, that makes sense. And again, it's short. Mm. Um, so overall, I do. If I do go back into my files, yeah, I do. One thing I do, I do that I will do, by the way, can I just show you something in the layers options? <clears throat> if you do the flyout menu, I turn off. So go down to panel options. I'll sometimes turn oh. off add a copy. Because sometimes I'll get a copy, like Smart. copy two, copy three. Not sometimes I want to just be just be camera raw or just be FB yeah. four times. Just, yeah. <laughs> just kind of <laughs> simplifies a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because then you know that exactly what's going on. Yeah, right now I actually do, yeah, have layer one, two, three, four, five. But it almost looks like it, it's climbing up, which is nice. Uh, I try and organize my layers like pretty, pretty well. Ooh, color coding. Thank you, Tim. You can also color code layers. I don't oh, know if you've ever... color! I don't know. Really yeah. Know um. Gosh. Uh. Gosh. Oh. Layer panel. Um, no, it's um. Is that a yeah down that at a... the bottom? Yeah, that's a Mac feature. Oh wait, no. Oh yeah. Oh, never mind. Never mind. It is not a Mac feature. What's funny is I think all the colors look a little washed out because even when you picked red, it's like. That's like a washed out red. Yeah. It's, it's like, like a red mix. Comparing with gray. it with the red that we have here is just, yeah. And I almost want the whole th layer to be colored red. Yeah, that would, that would be really, really nice. cool. If, if it went right across, that would be really nice. Because, yeah, again, like I could. This would throw me off probably having mm -hmm. colors all along here. I don't know why. I just like to keep it. Keep simple. It clean. Keep it simple. Keep it clean. But no, that's cool. I, I didn't even really know about the uh, the colors. So thank you. Yeah. Tim knows what's up. Knows what's up. Appreciate it. So again, brush way way down to thirteen percent, and then I just kind of constantly click until I'm like, ah, yeah, that's blended. There you go. So that is looking a little bit. Yeah, it's looking nice coming right out there. And then I basically just add a lot more drops now on the eyeball itself. I'm going to stretch this holding shift now because it is the opposite. So I'm holding shift to stretch up and it's kind of lengthening that drop. And then I'm going to hold shift again because I want to keep it in the same spot. I don't want it like moving all over. And when you hold shift, it keeps it aligned with where it is. So that's always a, a very helpful tool to know as well. Shift is, I literally shift click everything, I think. Yeah, exactly. You like constrain it, whichever way you want to constrain it. And then sometimes I'll use the magic button, like the alt key, just to, because it does magic as well. Oh yeah. The alt. Like alt is like, if you're like, there should be another option for this tool or this thing. <laughs> Like Alt key might do it anyway. So I'm just going to put overlay again. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do soft light on this one because I don't want it to show, I don't want it to make too much like difference on the image. And I find that with overlay, it creates a huge contrast. Uh, so here's the difference. I'll show you again. So that's soft light. This is overlay and this is soft light. Mm -hmm. So see how it's a little bit just subtle. It's more, yeah, it's more pleasing to the eye to yeah. see something like this. More pleasing to the eye. <laughs> <laughs> have to, you have to throw in the pun. But are the, those are the ones that I always use. I use, I go to overlay, I go to soft light. Those are probably, overlay is probably my most used and then soft light, yeah. like the tone Over, down. And version. color is a big one for me too. Okay. The, uh, so this one would have been set to color. Um, but overlay just looked way better. But normally what I do 
is I will make this the color layer. Okay. To see how it. And that t that tints it. Mm -hmm. So I'll set that to color and then erase over. The oh, softer brush. Softer brush, but opacity down again, <laughs> and then there. So that kind of mm -hmm. now brings in that yes. off the plant, right? Yeah. So this is exactly what you want to try and achieve with your imagery is because colors reflect on white. So like when mm. you're taking a picture okay. of it, okay. that white almost becomes that color. It's it's kind of mm -hmm. hard to uh, like, or especially around like the You're shadowing right, and everything it's, like it's that. It's not gonna be it's mm -hmm. not gonna be gray, for no, instance. No, no. Even in in contrast, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Same thing with shadows are never gonna be like black. It's always gonna be a color mm -hmm. of yeah of the object or of the light. Exactly. So these shadows had to be dark red. So that's why I mm -hmm. always put I put the red layer first at the bottom, which I did right here. This is my red. And then I put my actual shadow on top of it. Mm. So it darkened my red and created that red shadow for me. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, we could do all sorts of things. We could add a, spikle, a sparkle to the eye. There's like making the eye multicolored. I encourage you to do that because we are, we do yeah. have the, uh, the challenge going on right now. And uh, we'll be reviewing those in 38 minutes. I will be changing that uh, eye color, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, I love just ch making it almost the same color as the actual flower itself. I find that it kind of connects it a little bit more. Okay. Uh, or I normally use uh, like an opposite color. So um, something that kind of stands out and complements it with um, the one that I had right here. I used blue yeah. because it really matched with the background and it balanced well. Mm -hmm. The yellow kind of blended and merged too much with the actual flower to actually show anything. But I could see that. This one's a nice little green too. That's good though. Like notice the saturation is at the same level. Mm -hmm. Even here, it's the saturation. The other the other image, the previous one was like desaturated. But you have that you're matching up that saturation mm -hmm. perfectly. You know? It's not an intense red or an intense green. So I'm just erasing some of the drops here just to get rid of the excess things that I don't really want. Mm -hmm. And this is just, I'm not, there's no technique behind this right now. I'm not, I'm just kind of visually just getting rid of just some of the drops. There's nothing really special about it or, but you can do this in any, any way that you want. It always looks, it always looks amazing when you, uh, just erase around things. Just creates a little bit more depth around that actual image itself. So make sure that I don't have any excess. Yeah, and I like I like hearing. I think, yeah, I just I really like hearing you talk about the decisions that you're making. So it's almost less about the tools sometimes and more about you know again what color to mm -hmm. paint and how intense those shadows need to be and even the water droplets now, like how intense does it get or not? What do you do if you like so, something isn't looking right? Like, So this image right now, um, like I always go through a final, final process and that is always camera raw. I put every single composite back into camera raw at the very end and that's when I start balancing out the um, actual like hardness and and uh, sharpness to the image, the contrast, the shadows, that's where I really find a huge flexibility because camera raw just offers just a little bit more than levels and hue, your, your adjustment mm -hmm. layers, right? It's all there. And then yeah. I can control color too, which is really nice in camera raw. Yeah, I think I'm hopefully speaking for everybody when I say we would love to see that also, oh. that oh, like yeah, one no, point sure. when you get to that point and be interested in seeing that. What I've been using a lot, I don't know if you've, uh, and I think Kathleen was showing this, but um, uh, color lookup, color lookup tables. I'll show oh, it yeah, to you. Oh yeah, my, my uh, the LUTs, yeah, I use yeah. them all the time. They're, oh. they're good for video. I actually have my own LUTs. Oh good. Uh, yeah, so I can, I'll send you those. Um, I have, I did my own at one point and I actually always apply, that's how I started kind of my whole color process, uh -huh. um, was I started using LUTs and then I started making my own um, using the adjustment layers. And then I just found that it sped up my workflow so much because all of my imagery could be the exact same tone, color, all that stuff, everything. And 
it was amazing for series because mm -hmm. I would create a set of images and then apply the LUT to all of them. Even if they were different colors and they looked all different at the start, it would make it literally the same color all throughout. So I use them as kind of like my um, Lightroom presets kind of in a way. That's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Try and keep it on one program, that's what I do. So, um, it would be interesting. I don't know how to do this. Maybe Tim knows how, maybe you know how, but I'd love to be able to take a LUT and uh, like decompress it. May it could be mm. a zip file. Because basically LUTs are just basically, it could be, a, uh, it's basically a bunch of adjustment layers. Yeah. In one little package. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm really not sure. Because I want to be able I to crack it open. Because I use some LUTs that I'm like, I, I know exactly. This is man. so cool. How did they make this? What's I've been trying. What's in there? I, I think I researched that before. Huh. Actually, yeah, I've tried to do it uh, to to because I think I lost one of my LUT files, okay. like the actual saved PSD version of it, and I was like, uh oh, because mm. uh, I like to enhance them here and there. Um, but yeah, no, I noticed that it, it uh, they definitely help out like a lot. Yeah, <clears throat> and again, I just I know some LUTs that look really good, and I I want to know how it's made. I know. I, yeah, I think That's it's just all. a bunch of just adjustment layers, and they use yeah. um, and they just target colors just separately. So I'm just gonna fix this in here because it's a little bit rough. But I'm going to again set my opa or uh, I'm gonna set my hardness down to zero. Uh, maybe brush size, uh, brush size up to let's say 67, and then opacity down to 25. I was told to work in 25s all the time but I like to go a little bit lower than that. That's cool. Um, and Manav, by the way, that's just our cliffhanger. We're just, we're gonna show LUTs, but not right now. Like maybe when we get to a finishing stage with this, oh, we'll, can, we'll show LUTs. Show like right I don't now. wanna screw you up or. Oh no, this is perfectly fine. So LUTs, I like to go to the adjustments uh, tab here and then I'll do color lookup. And these are basically uh, like the LUTs. Let's like, uh, I think Foggy Night is one of my favorite ones to use. So this basically, let me zoom out here and move this. So this is like a color LUT layer. And what I like to do with this one is I always like to do the, the lighten uh, technique because it kind of does, it works really well with um, contrasted images because it, it works with the, uh, the, the back of, uh, it works well with blacks rather than whites. Um, so there's not many blacks in this image, so it's trying to adjust it. But these are basically LUTs and they're, uh, yeah, you can kind of create your own by just uh, creating a bunch of those layers. And then I think you just go file. Um, I think it's in one of these things. I'll move my head. <laughs> uh, yeah, where is it? Or it could be a save as or export, export. Oh yes export. it is, yeah, there, color lookup tables. So you say export color lookup tables if you have a bunch of adjustment layers over an image and you're like, wow, I did, that's a pretty cool um, color scheme that mm -hmm. I did on that. So export it as a color lookup table and then if you, you can just load it in right here. You say load 3D LUT, load okay. it in and all of your images will basically look. Try two st strip look just to give people an option. Yeah, so there's okay, another. Try, and then try the two strip. So there's that, two. This one's my favorite, but again, what it does is it does a uh, an and, orange and teal, orange like does a teal kind of color. I thought, it, I thought this one was the one that did blue and pink. You might be right, you might be mm -hmm. right. But it's like, I really like the kind of color combo you, it you does. You like my gloomy one then. Oh yeah, I'm into <laughs> it. And everything you just described is perfect because where do let's come from? It, they wanted to create consistency, so if you're creating a movie, mm -hmm. different uh, you know editors and systems, they're all using the same color scheme, if you will. So that's what these are. These are This is a color scheme that I'm applying. And that's what you do. You say, hey, I'm creating a series. I want them to all, all match. It's the LUT that does it. Yeah, so. it's definitely the LUT that does it. But fun to play it. And also makes it feel like I'm going through like Instagram filters mm -hmm. is what it feels like yeah, when yeah. I start selecting it's, Yeah, it, it does have a really cool Instagram filter. And especially if you're like lost and you're like, I don't know what to do, like, just open that up and like, oh. Yeah, just place it on, yeah. Just play around. Oh, and it's actually, I, I find that it's almost saved my design work like so often because I would be just kind of like 
sitting there with all these colors all over my canvas and I'd be confused. And all of a sudden I apply that LUT and it just simplifies my, yeah. all the colors that are going Man. on on my, on my canvas. So true. And I'm like, yeah. wow, this is just way easier to work with. Shadows are now easier to work with. Lighting's yeah. easier to work with. It just makes it a lot easier. And I yeah. used to use them all the time, all the time. But then I switched kind of over because I, I started targeting individual colors rather than a full set of colors. Yeah, into it, that's good. Good stuff, man. So I'm just gonna quickly, let's just, I'm gonna call this a uh, kind of a composite right here. And what I always like to do, uh, this is now the process of when I'm like, oh yeah, that looks good and something that I would post, then I would merge all my layers together. So I would hold Alt, drag all my layers up, Control E, merge them all. And now I have my actual composite composite, and now I can work with it in camera raw. So I, I always, uh, by the way, the reason why I cropped my canvas again is because a lot of elements like to stretch beyond the canvas and you can never tell. And when you go to camera raw, um, camera raw knows that you stretched it over the canvas and it will bring all of those elements that you had back like on the canvas itself. Wow. So when you go um, filter, camera raw filter, um, now it should be the actual image itself, just the image rather than having all the excess uh, masks and all that stuff that I missed on the sidelines that you don't actually see. So it's just taking its time here. <laughs> you're doing a paste back in from, oh, there it is. No, I'm sorry, opening you're up opening camera, camera raw. raw. Okay, yeah, thank yeah. you. So there we go. And now I'm just going to put down that exposure, boost the highlights. This is where you can really play around with your imagery and really start sharpening it up and making it look kind of more realistic. Nora, that's a good uh, thought. Just kind of talking about like, can you make the eye turn <laughs> once you used it? Like you could do an animated GIF if you wanted to. I just like that idea. Yeah, I, I like oh, I, it. This I, is what I, you need. I, I, I could, I could, but the reason I mean, why now, I can't but... do that now is because um, I've kind of messed up halfway through, but covered it up nicely, and mm. uh, I rasterized that shape, that smart object. Yeah. So if it was a smart object, yes, I totally can like make it move around, look up and down, all freakishly, but and I, I, yeah, maybe I would do that, but I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, I would go so much more subtle. I would just have it move. It would be like nothing for three seconds and then slightly move your way for a, a oh. frame or two and then move back. Oh, so Like you like wanted to yeah. mess with people's so head. So people are kind of like, did that, that just Yeah, did that just move? Did that just move? Like, and be like, no, no, it didn't move. <laughs> ah, it's fine, like it. Anyway, <laughs> but yes, you can. <laughs> Thanks to even the Pixel Squid like plugin. Yeah, like awesome. yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, that is a pretty, it is such a. By the way, I think also like Hammer Raw, you know why I like Hammer Raw? <laughs> It looks intimidating because there's a lot going on here, but I usually tell people just like hit, if you ever need a magic button, just hit auto. Like if you don't yeah, even yeah. know what to do, just hit auto and just watch all the dials kind of move into place. Like that at least might even be a starting a starting point, you know, objectively analyzing the image and exactly. you know, normalizing it. So yeah, so that's kind of something that- Ooh, um, Jessica Craney, like have the pupil <laughs> get over. I love it, how to like dial it. Yeah, and stuff. that should, would be really cool. Very subtle. So that, that's basically like my overall normally. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll add a little bit more to it after. Iris Blur, I know that somebody mentioned that previously. I do use that. Um, I'll throw that on there. Uh, just to give it that extra little bit of uh, artis artistic look, you know? Gives it that depth. But if it was like a more intense image, I probably would use the uh, brush tool, or not the brush tool, the blur tool over uh, iris. Just because I'm not really focusing on anything else in this case, mm -hmm. it's, it's easy to just do it with this image. If I had like bees and butterflies flying around, then I probably wouldn't uh, necessarily do uh, that. I like the like the various blur tools and effects that are in Photoshop. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Tilt shift. 
So now in here is where I kind of bring out my um, clone stamp and this is basically where I fix all those little small little errors that I did here and there. Um, just to blend it in just a little bit more. Because these are kind of sharp lines and you just don't want them in there. You just want it to be all, there you go. That's merged actually really nicely. This will get tricky. So like, how do you like, how would you match that? Cause this grain here, do you know how you'd match that Match grain? this with that? Yeah. yeah. So basically what I would do in, in a sense is I would put a grain over this image itself, okay. but that was due to um, <clears throat> the camera raw filter. Unfortunately, when I boosted up the, um, let's go to history here. When I boosted up the clarity, it made that pixel. Oh, made it a little sharper. Okay. Um, Got it. Yes. Or camera raw noise. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Here, we'll add some. We'll add some noise in there. Noise is the, the easiest thing to add. So, I will create a new layer in eyeball because that's the only thing that actually needs noise. I will bring it to the top, and then I do filter, uh, render, and clouds. So that's <laughs> so that's all like uh, just cloud uh, random clouds. I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure what to actually use this clouds uh, render thing for normally other than this. And then I'll go. I think it's kind of what you're doing usually. Nobody uh, ever you actually. I feel like professionals don't ever use it for clouds. Yeah, no, it's I usually don't, to yeah, add texture yeah, or something yeah, like you're doing. That's because it doesn't really give you a cloud. It just gives you like a whole spread of clouds. But I will go. Uh, noise and I think yeah add noise and then boost it all the way to the top make sure that it's noised right out and that's basically what my clouds looks like and then mm -hmm. I will uh, hue and saturation Take that. all the way down and then you have your noise layer over top and you can just bring that uh, down to match there you go now we got kind of noise between both of them yeah look at that so that's that's the point where you like you 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 timestamp this video. You you make note of the time, by the way, in this video, because like go do this. Like this is mm -hmm. something that people need to. If you're matching images, yeah. you need to know yeah. how to like add oh, this yeah. noise. For sure. Yeah, these yeah. yeah these are things that you that you would want to save and 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 definitely put in that that back mind of yours. Uh, and then thank you, Tim, as well. Like recommending using so you could also do that with camera raw add a noise filter. In that case, you're using the mm -hmm. whole image, but you could do it to just a, a single part if you want to If you want to do it that way. That's also a good. Yeah, camera, camera raw. Oh, Manav likes the camera raw noise too. It's better. Awesome. I like to hear that. And different ways of doing things, but this yeah, looks really good. So like, I, yeah. Things. And honestly, these are only details that you would notice like when you're this close. Oh yeah. Because even no, how you had sure. it before, knowing that you're going to publish this to Instagram, Currently, yeah. So I, I designed for uh, for platform, really, right? So it would be, yeah, definitely. This would be definitely something that I would throw up on Instagram. Not something that I would print. Um, printing pieces, I take a little bit longer on. Normally, it takes me around maybe one to two days to actually uh, create a printed piece, rather than a few hours for Instagram. Typically, when you work, are you working know. in like sort of like full res, like? the yeah. largest size you can because you might want to print it out to yeah. like, kind of safeguard yourself. Exactly, yeah. The absolute largest possible size. Um, if I have to crop it, then like, I'm always like, ouch, I had to crop that a little bit. But because yeah. <laughs> I'm shrinking right? my image and now I'm sh getting it even smaller. Do you, and Do you know about like cropping but not deleting the pixels outside of the area? Cropping but so not. So click, just click the crop tool. Okay, and then right up here at the top, uncheck delete cropped pixels. Oh. Well, means it, it, so first off, it's gonna make your file size bigger. But technically, even outside of the the canvas area, it keeps those pixels, oh. it keeps that image. Just so yeah. you know. So either way. Wow, I had no, I actually had no idea about that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we we like just sneak things in and yeah, just sneak and in then and maybe and tell you about them. Yeah, maybe tell <laughs> yeah. people. I feel sorry for the engineers because you know there's engineers that like <laughs> my, I don't know. It's the whole thing. So, Ooh, there we go. Oh yeah, Manav knows you are good, Manav. I love having like Photoshop experts. Yeah. Here. 
Because he's talking about like when you merge all the layers onto it. I always, I used to know that shortcut and I forgot it. But control, control Alt Shift E. I don't know if that's like on Mac and same as for PC, but we'll merge everything onto a brand new layer. Control Alt Shift E. Ooh, that's a. That's a That's a handful of keys right there. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, Car welcome, Carmen. Just tuned in uh, as well from California. We're here in beautiful San Francisco, where it actually is a beautiful yeah, day. It is, yeah. Sean's first time here. Uh, so, yeah, Carmen, come on up. We're in San Francisco in the Adobe offices. Join yeah. the, our in studio crowd of, we're now up to 500 people that have wandered wow. in. So wow. many. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, <laughs> 500 people. <laughs> they're so quiet, they're so good. Yeah, they're, they're paying attention. That's what it is. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna bring this back into Camera Raw because I uh, deleted my Camera Raw process before, and now I'm just gonna boost it up again. Uh, gonna increase that texture a little bit, adding a little bit more noise, and then clarity, add more clarity to it. Boost up them highlights. And then this is also probably where I would crop my canvas even, even closer. Probably something like around there. There we go. See, this is what, you see how it's like, gives that transparency? Mm-hmm. Because that sh those are the pixels that are being kept. Oh, these are the pixels, oh, okay. Yeah, like mm -hmm. up there, it's gonna kind of just giving you a preview. Hello, Fazal from Pakistan. Hello. Uh, hey, Justin. Do you know Justin yes, Dunford? Yes, I do. Awesome. Yeah. Is he a fellow Canadian? Yeah, I've actually seen a lot of fellow Canadians in here oh, uh, nice. so far. So hello, if you guys are still in, in there. <laughs> yeah. It's a different time zone. I think it's like probably around two o'clock almost. Oh no, that it literally says on, on the bottom corner of my screen for me. It's uh, one forty one in in Canada right now. Oh yeah, <laughs> I haven't changed that yet. Three hours ahead. So that's probably something that I would personally post on on my Instagram from that point. Adding maybe a little blur to it, and uh, I like to keep them simple. Um, <laughs> Normally, if I had a little bit more time, I pro I personally would maybe put a little bit of an element in there to uh, interact with the actual um, eye itself. I did um, some butterflies in this one. I thought it really matched that yellow theme. And then I did uh, nothing in this one. This one was actually my very first one. And I thought that it, it would just look so cool. So I decided mm -hmm. to do uh, four more, apparently. <laughs> mm -hmm. So And then I have this cool new random sneak piece of a nice a random piece too that, that has nothing to and do with and i like with all these like this this one you added the butterflies right mm, so this one has a little bit yeah so here let's see if i can actually let's go down let's go down and because hide I, all my I, layers and I, just go work yeah, our way and there's out. like lots of things to talk about here by the way like so many things just because i like each one i like from for different reasons ayo from nigeria what's up Argolin from San Diego, just south of us. Good to have you here. So I'm just gonna disable this right Archibald's now. from the west side of Canada. I don't know if you're like Vancouver. That's what probably everybody says when they say the west side of Canada. <laughs> west side. Right? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I've never heard of somebody say, yo, I'm from the west side the of west Canada. The west side of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> the left coast. <laughs> Canada's left coast. People just say, are you from Toronto or not? That's, like, yeah. <laughs> that's literally like. Yeah, because you're not even in, you, you no, just No, I'm like on the edge, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, like that's funny, which is totally good. <laughs> I just simplify, yeah. Like on the edge of it. We have people as far away as Malaysia joining us. So you're talking it about being three hours later. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's some people actually Malaysia tuning in from... uh, that I know of. At, it's like 2 a.m. for them right now, and they're staying up to watch mm -hmm. it. So thank you if you're still tuned in or passed out behind the computer. <laughs> uh, they could late. be uh, waiting for design feedback because we have about 15 minutes oh, yeah. before we do yeah. that, just so you know. So. Um, so I'm just going to go through um, just one of my older files just to kind of show you how this one was built up and talk about it a little bit more. Um, so 
I placed a pixel squid 3D object in this image. Uh, I used the same eyeball I did the one I created for you guys today. Um, and then I masked it, similar process. Again, I always like to follow a same process because I, I feel like it just, it just makes sense to follow the same process. So again, adding that yellow tone, uh, if you look at the one that we did today, uh, we have a red tone on there, uh, so it's kind of similar. And then, uh, yeah, so I added that, added some more yellow blending because yellow is actually a really challenging color to uh, to blend in with light co lighter colors like white or or, um, or even like a lighter kind of like pink. Um, so and then I added my highlight there. Um, this is all just in the uh, just in the eyeball alone already. Um, but uh, then I added some a little bit of orange at the bottom because I noticed that when I really went in this crevice right here, there was orange in here. Oh, so this good would, eye. So this would be a similar um, look to what this eyeball would have to offer as well because it's kind of a similar crevice for both of them. So it would have been the orange bringing in. So I just, I dropped that orange and I clicked it on in there again and then uh, added some more yellow highlights because down here, uh, since the flower is actually really close to that eyeball, um, it actually has to bring that reflection of the yellow onto it because it's, it's touching it almost. This is more of a depth in here, so it, it won't actually bring um, that kind of yellow in. Um, then I added a nice little highlight there, uh, changed the pupil color to blue uh, I just simply just use the color uh, layer adjustment right up in the top corner there. I just set the color and that enhances any any color that you want. Uh, added more uh, of a highlight around because the lighting is coming from this direction. What helps me with lighting, here's a tip, here's a really good tip. Um, what helps me with lighting is I will always grab a red brush at the very start of my project and I will just click where the lighting is coming from so that I know, and then I'll just name this like uh, light, direct, light direction, and I'll just kind of, uh, oh, shift, yeah, I gotta get used to that, mm -hmm. and then shift this way, and then I just say, there. So now, that's kind of my reminder that like lighting is, I, wouldn't, I won't keep this layer in the image, so when the final composite is, is done, that won't be in there, but just so that I know, uh, and I don't have to keep thinking about it, and then zooming out and zooming in, right? I just see the, that red line, and I know that's where the lighting's coming, mm -hmm. coming from. So then I can adjust my highlights accordingly, because your highlights will be facing it directly. So your highlights are facing that way, and then my lighting is facing that way. So when I did added the highlights in here, you could tell it has that kind of directional uh, pull to it. So I'll delete that. Yeah, then you can I do it. Added some of the drips in there. Added some water. Again, I just knit, name my layers: drip, drip, blurred water. Um, but this is only because you knew you're going to be on the stream. You have to name your layers. No, I actually, no, no, I, so I name them after if I keep the PSD. If I don't keep the PSD, then I don't name them. Uh, okay. But I try and keep a lot of my PSDs. Uh, I probably will design like eight or nine a day, but then I will only save two out of that. And I know you're supposed to save everything, but <laughs> I get it all the time. I even was at the, the airport and somebody told me to save everything. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we were talking about design. She's like, you should save everything. I'm like, I hear That's that funny. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying a concept with this one where I was going to add a fly in there. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know what? Let's bring that fly over to... Good call. I know, I know why, too. Why the fly? I think in the original piece, the eye wasn't looking at the fly. That was the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what the, uh, it's, it didn't give it that perspective that I needed and I wanted it more to interact with the actual canvas. Oh, I think I'm going to There, finally, okay. 
Remy, we want to welcome you. Good to have you. Feel free to be part of the discussion. Might might need help just kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't. Like, and that's a that's a whole other yeah like conversation. Like, trying to decide if something's working or not working. It's, it's a tough thing. Yeah, it is. It's just. It's actually just. I th I almost think that it's just personal preference it's just like do you think that it's working and like if you think that it works then that's almost the only opinion that kind of matters behind that piece right because you're expressing yourself right so yeah there is a lot of uh like obviously i can't just put the fly like upside down uh, like flying randomly in the corner um but when it comes down to like perspective and stuff it just has to do with the eye, I guess, and you just have to kind of sit back and look at it and then dive right in again. Yeah, and I think that's important though. Like, mm. so I think in terms of like, you know, the creativity involved, it's sure your perspective, but then like sometimes the technical execution, if somebody walks by and says, that doesn't look right, that might be all you need. Like maybe mm. it doesn't, maybe something about it doesn't look right. Mm. That's why it's like you said, you lean back you look, it's like you're looking at it a little bit differently. You might have it, a, you it might get up bit. and leave, right? Do you ever do that? You get up, you go, yeah. oh, you yeah, go have lot. dinner, and then yeah. you come back, and then you're like, oh, that's, oh, that's what I was. Looking that's what's for. wrong with that's it, what or it whatever. Yeah. And that's like so huge. That's why it's nice having chat here. We have so many extra eyes on this mm -hmm. that just like helps us out. To be honest with you, like super cool. This already looks pretty cool. What do you guys think? Let us know. How, welcome. welcome, Becky Burke. I don't know if you're from Alaska. Good to have you here. Just north of us. Uh, I've always created using Pixel Squid. To, we could rewind and watch that later. Uh, less than 10 minutes to review your uh, designs as well and give mm -hmm. you feedback. That's part of the uh, challenge tab, just so you know. So that's what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't create the uh, eye, uh, the ball uh, eyeball in 3D. Um, it is a Photoshop 3D object. Um, but I, uh, I basically just use Pixel Squid uh, right here, which is, I'm pretty sure that they, they do offer a free version of Pixel Squid, um, but I like it just for the fact that I can throw in any, any objects that I want. I'll click an umbrella here just to show you an example. And uh, yeah, you can spin it any way that you want. Put it upside down, put it that way. Umbrella. <laughs> so. Yeah, you can do whatever you, whatever you want with it. Obviously, I'm not gonna put an umbrella in this picture, but it's just cool how it gives you that that ability to to bring these objects in like instantly, and I think it really works out really well um, when you're trying to find something. And I, I I don't like to cut out small things, so say I need like a a soccer ball or 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 something like something that that will is time consuming for me to go searching the internet for. Definitely saves me a lot of time. Um, but yeah, so then I started adding some more of um, kind of a uh, butterfly in the corner. So when they start off, they do 100% look like 3D objects, and that's what I have. Um, that's what I have a problem with is that like is that they look like 3D objects. So blending them in. So I'll uh, enable all of my blending layers here, and boom. It kind of blends it in a little bit more, and what I just literally I'm just using a white brush and a black brush at like I think 25% opacity, and these are all set to uh, most of them are set to overlay, and that kind of blends it. And then you add the um, the shadow underneath, which is also drawn in by brushes as well. I don't do the whole flip. Uh, technique. I know that that is a that is a thing. Or there is another technique where people can use uh, the blending options, and you can just add a drop shadow from there if you really want to. But I I try and stay away from the the, mm -hmm. the, the drop shadow because you have a, not as much control as as you need. So I just I just paint them on. Yeah. Um, I that's probably my most used tool is definitely the brushes. Definitely, definitely the brushes. And then I just kind of, uh, yeah. And then I create my, this is my final camera raw, so it's just sharpening, enhancing the uh, actual colors. And then I add my blurring depth of field after. And yeah, that was that's the final eyeball piece for that one. Um, and this one's actually turning out pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I'll have to post this one on my Instagram tonight, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you should. And then you can be like, hey, you know what? Check out the live stream link. Yeah, yeah. Boom, no, this is sure. how it was made. It'll be awesome. It is looking, looking at a very good. I'm so just... I made it a little bit more yellow because uh, right now on my theme is uh, I'm trying to do yellow imagery. So I try and make it all match up. Um, this one has to match up with this one. So I kind of visually uh, take all my imagery out and I will view them visually like this side by side because if I say like, all right, this is this was the last post right here, I need to figure out like if this one actually matches it. And since I work with grids, um, you work three images across and then nine uh, images in total, just an, uh, all around nine images. But yeah, no, that's a uh, that's basically my final composition uh, right there. I love the fly. I think it looked pretty uh, looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And oh. I like I like the color too. Mm -hmm. Got a little the green. Yeah, hints a little of bit green, of difference. Of Ooh, actually, that would be really nice to enhance this area right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself that good old I think lasso tool. Carmen, how did you oh, not discover this live stream earlier? We are trying, we are keeping it from you, and you <laughs> yeah. found us. Yeah, man, uh, it's a giant game who, of hide and seek. Who all. told Carmen? <laughs> Gigs up, <laughs> Carmen. Thank you so much for being here, especially if it's your first time. Feel free to ask questions. We're recording these sessions. So. We have XD Daily Creative Challenge coming up. We have another guest this afternoon working in UX UI. <laughs> I'm, I just tried to use the lasso tool. <laughs> oh yeah, and you're like, oh, yeah. why did I start this? <laughs> why no. did I do that? <laughs> but you're just like punching up that color a little bit? Yeah, just to match it with the bee or uh, fly a little bit more. And like, since I, you can't really tell, like I, I just, there's not really any sharp edges because it's all white. Mm. So it's actually turned out pretty good. So yeah, no, now they're both kind of, you know, visually, it's pointing you in the direction towards the actual fly, or the fly is pointing you in the direction towards this flower. So if you look at it now, it's creating uh, depth from up here down, and from down the bottom corner into this area. So it's kind of like a triangle mm -hmm. uh, focusing on the eye. That's what makes mm. flowers just such a good composition to work with. Because again, it's like all these arrows and lines drawing you into mm -hmm. the piece. And even, you know, simple things like cropping it, that all becomes very important. Like what you're also not doing, like, I don't get to learn this in art school and stuff, but like you don't have anything coming out of the corner or anything like that. Like yeah. it's just very, very focused. Everything's kind of blurred out and the edges like looks very good. And then this is, <coughs> this is my final, 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 final process. I like to do a nice little uh, oh, black brush around oh, okay. and this is where I like kind of- Vignetting type. Just darken it around the edges so that it doesn't kind of, so that it pixelates it kind of. Cool. And normally that just makes it a little bit more. We have welcome bold. Becky as well. It'd be a uh, beginning stalker, as she calls herself. Ah. We welcome stalkers yeah. in, well, a, in a friendly <laughs> way, in a, like way, yeah. as in. Thank yeah, you we'll for open the door us. for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Canadian thing for sure. I had to, I had to mention that because the amount of doors that are open in Canada for you, oh, everybody really? opens a door for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just come on in. Uh, yeah, and we are opening a door for you also with the design challenge. Yeah. I'm looking at some of those as we're getting down to like our last two minutes uh, with that. So we'll be checking out those today. Perfect. And then what I do, file, export, save for web. This is just saving it, exporting it for Instagram. So this is what I always like to do. Uh, it's always good to know how to export for Instagram. Uh, oh, yes, I do. I do mm. know you. I do know you. I know you. I know your work. You're a good artist. Who's this? Uh, Manav. Manav. Yeah. Okay. Ask Sean if he knows me. <laughs> yeah, I do know you. And then I'll just save this uh, into my documents, and maybe you'll see this up uh, online tonight, which will be really nice. And we'll call this uh, the we'll call this the Paul Flower. Oh yes, thank you. <laughs> um, so I did want to. So, and then do you like upload, transfer it to your phone? 
that what you do? I, yeah, so I save it to my hard drive, bring it over to my Mac, airdrop it to my phone. Very cool. Because my videos are normally around, uh, they're a little bit over 30 megs and I can't really email that to myself, so. The, the videos. So yeah. I was gonna show you this. I don't know if you've seen this. We'll just kind of jump over here really fast. Ooh. It's called Windowed. Whoa. So literally, this somebody made this app. This simulates it's basically a browser window emulating a mobile browser. So this is like oh, literally really cool. I can take a design and this is basically Instagram. So click right here, go into neon, you know, grab this image. Wow. And this is, this is Instagram, right? So again, um, that looks pretty good. You get the idea. Yeah. So again, it's called yeah, windowed really cool. in case you don't want to transfer it or whatever. Mm -hmm. You are limited. Um, I can't remember what, I ran into a limitation for it and I'm not sure what it was. Maybe it was like geolocation or something. Mm, that but makes sense. Other than that, yeah, it's super wow, cool. Wow, that's really cool, yeah. Because yeah. I normally, yeah, I need to learn how to. Oh, Manav says you can post through the web as well. Oh. Yeah, that works. There, cool. perfect. So again, yeah, I need, to, I need to start doing the the whole posting through the web uh, thing. That whole airdrop, I need to get rid of my Mac. I'm just having attachment issues. <laughs> That's what it is. I want my Mac included you want still. Some Mac. I've had it so long, like I've had it for eight years and now it's dying and uh, I, I just want them included still, you know? <laughs> yeah. You started my career, I want them to be there through the whole thing. <laughs> All right, well, it does, yeah. our clock does say yeah. zero, zero, zero. So we'll kind of shift gears just so cool. you know, we're gonna dive into the challenge. Okay, Perfect. so this is all about design feedback right now. Cool. The whole goal is to make uh, swap image backgrounds, create a unique composite image. Oh, perfect. So what I'm checking out is Discord, by the way. So you can, you can check out Discord, you can click on that link. Um, and this is where you get the invite, but essentially this is Discord, the uh, Photoshop channel, so we're in design feedback. So I encourage you to jump in here as well, and we'll get your kind of get your opinion and take on these as well. Perfect. So Perfect. let's get started. Um, it's got a couple things going on here. This is very interesting. Like uh, Guarav mm -hmm. Barai. Uh, did some compositing. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's the same image. Actually yeah, two that's different what, images. wow, yeah. It actually, I thought I was like, is that just a photograph? Like, wow, that you did a pretty good job. Matching it up, yeah. Yeah, the only thing I would say is that contrast. Yeah. With the branches, but other than that. Okay. That's a, it's a really nice piece. Like, good you did job, a really good, yeah. Uh, good job cutting it out, because yeah. this is wow. not, yeah, yeah, that that's is not, not easy. An easy task like, go through here. Yeah, that is, uh, that's a lot of copies right there. I think actually what you would do, so here's here's the situation, you do this all the time, mm -hmm. I think you do it so well, like blurring. So we know in the foreground we have blurriness, right down here, mm -hmm. and then the background's blurry. So would it serve this well to do, add a little bit of, bit of blur or not? Um, to the corner, to yes. Corner. Yeah, so okay. corner, yes, because um, the branch could swing out into the, mm -hmm. the actual focal area, but definitely down here in this corner would be blurred because this one, uh, it looks like it's being shot towards us almost. Yeah, yeah. exactly, because mm -hmm. even right behind it, if this is gonna be in front of that blurriness, this needs to be blurred yeah, out. Yeah, and it needs to also, it okay. needs to be more blurred out than the uh, okay. the grass is. More blurred out. Yeah, yeah I just work on, uh, uh, your image is in the center. It's like a sandwich. Whatever you put in the center works. Everything, the, the bread is blur. So if whatever you put in your sandwich in the middle, you put like some ham in there, which mm -hmm. is your, this will be your, the your ham. Your ham, uh, this yeah. is the meat of it yeah, all. Yeah, it's the meat right? of it all, right? So you want to, you know, squeeze it all together with two blurs to make it look like mm -hmm. a, a full sandwich. Yeah. There's a metaphor and for e you. <laughs> and easy and an easy fix where all the hard work I think is done. Yeah. For this. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Oh yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. Easily. You could almost have like a little like parrot or something like that, and uh, like a little animal sitting on this <laughs> branch. That'd be cool. Throw a little Dude, butterfly yeah. in yeah, there. Yeah. Throw a little. Throw a little. Some. Some in there. Yeah. Into it. So let's. Sorry. Let's just do this. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Love it. There we go. Uh, let's go to Manav. Wow. That's a really nice look. I love the uh, the turtle. Just kind of, it, it kind of gives you like a weird kind of perspective. Imagine if there was like rooms like that, like underwater kind of, where it's just yeah. you see all this stuff. Yeah. The shooting stars is the only thing that I don't really understand in it though. You mean this part? No, the shooting in the sky. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah you're right. That's 
That's one thing. Well, and here's another thing I would say is I feel like this black is darker than this black. Hmm. Yeah. So normalize that, make that a little more washed out. Match up those two blacks and then be awesome. Yeah. And you're right, like this part. Yeah. Not not necessary, but still super yeah. cool. Maybe even make the turtle even like bigger and like expand okay. them. Because it looks like, you know, you kind of crop the back of the turtle a little bit using that framing, right? Yeah. You can almost use those those bars. Maybe even remove one of those bars. Yeah. Then continue the window. I agree. That is kind of a mm. weird place to divide the uh, yeah. the turtle in terms of composition. But still, yeah, still my really good. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yay. Fantastic. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Whoa. Everything is good until the glass breaks. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, seven day interpretation of the space collage. So here's a space collage that was being worked on as well. Super fun, looks like they're having yeah. fun. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. there's a lot going on here, just playing around. Yeah. I think what's best about this one is like, I think the, the color is good. Yeah, and I like how um, he's using like uh, the clip masks with his font. You could definitely tell that he's been mm -hmm. playing around with some of the clip masking, which is, yeah. which is definitely an, a, a useful tool to use. Uh, even kind of like the stars at the bottom look really nice with like the abstract kind of like pixelization down mm -hmm. there. Yeah, that looks kind of cool too. Yeah. It creates kind of like a depth to it. I'm into it. Mm -hmm. I like it. A lot, a lot of work going on there. I really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, looks like uh, Liani. Yeah. Uh, Iani. I don't, yeah. I don't know if I'm getting that right, but either way. Ooh, this oh, one's fun, go. by the way. Oh, yeah. Caspian Wolf. Ah, yeah, that's that fun. Cool. I love the planet that so you added in there. That looks really, uh, it yeah. really suits the uh, image. Are those pixel you squid? Those are pixel squid, aren't they? The planets? Yeah. I feel like you can actually mm. tell that this was added, by the way, because there's a little bit of a halo, just a slight halo mm. of black. Yeah. But that's being like really, yeah. really, yeah, nitpicky. really, ni yeah. This one, in contrast to the first one, the blacks, perfect tone, yeah. like everything fits. Yeah, definitely. Or even like, see, like, this is where I get really technical with things too. So I see that that ring around the actual character himself, and I would say there would be a, a that kind of cyan glow on the actual subject himself. Mm -hmm. So he would have more of that cyan kind of stretching out from the bottom of his arms up where mm -hmm. the actual ring around is. And do you do you tend to like maybe push that maybe even a little bit further than reality just to just to sell it? Yeah, Sometimes yeah, just, just kind of yeah, just yeah. push it just, out there. Just, it's okay. Just push it even further. Mm -hmm. Just the small little things. I find that a lot of people pick up on the small things in design, and it actually is like it's not something that we necessarily always think of, but it's just a different approach. And uh, yeah, yeah. But that one was really cool. Love it. I like that one. Fun yeah. to uh, yeah. fun to work on. It's like fantastic. Oh, oh, happy face. It's so good. Feel free to appreciate these, uh, Georgina. Maybe this mm -hmm. is the originals. Okay, so this is the final. So we can kind of see where this started. Just so everyone oh, knows. Okay, the originals cutting are her under. out. Okay. There's this one, and then this looks looks oh, like this is the cool. final. Definitely, you definitely chose. Very good images. Um, I love that you focus on the green and you grab green from both images, right? She was, I think she was holding a, a green kind of smoke thing or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she already, you were already working with the correct color scheme. Um, but my Instagram handle is Sean Riken. It's, uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Perfect. Nailed it. Nailed it. I would even say you can you can even cheat some of these images because I yeah. still feel like there's a halo there. I would even cut out more of that. I'd get yeah. rid of that yeah. black there. But and you're don't don't be scared <coughs> to cut off more than what you need. Like I always overcut my images. Okay. So yeah. uh, and it actually looks more realistic if you overcut your image. I'm not saying by like like. 20 pixels maybe like two or three pixels if you over crop yeah. it you get rid of that halo effect yeah and uh yeah good call yeah it looks really cool though i love the combination of those images for yeah. sure and i love how you showed the originals with it it's nice it's always good to Lots show your people process liking that that's good to see sweet oh this is a f another fun one and oh, we'll get as yeah. we'll get as far as we can um yeah we got we got a couple minutes. 
So composite photo, original, this is the final right in here. Yeah, it's oh, fun. Yeah. I mean, that's fun yeah. dealing with that subtle shadow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super subtle. Yeah. Very nice. Good job, Ants. Oh yeah, they did a really good job with that, uh, the shadow in the van. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there's too much negative space? I, I'm uh, all I'm I'm all for uh, the image. Yeah. The thing needs a place to travel to. Mm -hmm. Like I think this is good. If anything, it's almost too much of in the, in the center. Sometimes if it's in the center directly, yeah. it's it's almost boring. So uh, even her shifted up or whatever. Man, the good lighting. This yeah. Is good. Well, so I I do like the lighting, but I would also say that she ha needs highlights probably. Got on top it. Too. Perfect. Yeah. Because see, exactly see how the right. light is coming shining through yep. the water. So the top would have uh, lighting. Her, her face would actually be uh, lit up there. That'll be but, good because it'll yeah. make her pop. And, and that would make her pop out. Yeah, so much. And and no, you do there. You do not have like the negative space is perfect in this image. I think it it, it works. It creates the focal point around it, and it doesn't uh, create a complex kind of um, design. Right, you're not adding all these fancy things like whales and stuff around yeah. where you're complicating it. it. Exactly, mm -hmm. it's like an exercise in restraint. Yeah, you know, it's going to be simple and elegant. Ooh. And there's too many, too <laughs> many pieces. We we don't have much time. How much? Actually, no, we have about 10 more minutes. This is good. Yeah. Um, Gerard, this is fun. Wow, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> is, that, is that the um, Space Jam uh, like twister right there? Like the purple Space be. Jam twister? Love... That is so classic. That is a classic, <laughs> like iconic thing right there. That's funny. This is fun. Yeah. I just, I just appreciate people jumping in and just like playing yeah, just, around. This is uh, like how I basically um, started design was playing around, merging of images, creating composites like this, mm -hmm. like throwing random things together. And then I started focusing on, okay, now how do I take out some things in my image? Because I was starting to clutter up my images yeah. too much. And now it's more of a, uh, I focus more on focus, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right, and that's mm. that's the path of most designers. You know, using yeah. all the effects and adding all the things, and then just pulling just, back. Yeah, go crazy at the start. Go crazy, and then and then what's funny? Even if craziness. you like end up back to where you started, you know you're done. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah. Like I don't know. What, I don't but know. But this what, is fun. Like you're yeah. you're obviously like really pushing Photoshop to its. Too. Some cool. one of its limits, yeah. That's pretty cool. And love uh, the uh, wave filter that you added on the uh, mountain. Yeah. Works really well. And it might just be two separate images, but either way it's, you know, it's being sold pretty well. Oh yeah, because I see the tree line there. That See, that's where that's I, I was, yeah, that's what threw me yeah, out. Yeah, like the right tree line. here. No, these, Actually, it's no. like tall trees. Look at tall trees and look at the, the roundness of the trees on the oh, top. Oh yeah. Completely different. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but we had, definitely a, cool concept. we had a look for that. That's I, a good, I, uh, good I love job. it because it gives you that kind of like, this is what used to be here kind of. No, oh, well. yeah, you know, there's like you, a you hidden message. Target climate change with that one right there. <laughs> hashtag climate change. Hashtag, hashtag climate change. <laughs> Into it. <laughs> multiple images create, uh, John Leo, multiple images create uh, the background and added the plane and trail. Okay, there we go. Oh, that's, that's fun. So cool, yeah. <laughs> I would probably make the plane a little bit bigger. It was almost hard to see. I know bit. we mm -hmm. we didn't see it initially, so yeah, mm -hmm. it's a tough larger. Yeah. But I feel like it's it's traveling through like, uh, time and, and dimensions. Yeah, yeah. It's dimensions kind of going through different there. dimensions. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like you can okay. almost put like different items like floating in there, like old school, like an old school TV or something like that. Like it's flying through time. Yeah, and even in this case, mm -hmm. I think like you said earlier. It, if you added just a little bit of highlight there, it would make it pop a little oh, more. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A little larger. It little will separate it from that that gr or that darkness that you have going on there, right? You're you're mm -hmm. kind of outlining it to show the the viewer where that plane stops. Yeah, exactly. And that's what highlights really help. And just like maybe even just on this bottom side, yeah. kind of like again, you did a good job of here's the light source, here's how it's going to affect mm -hmm. the, determining how it affects the object. Good call. Oop. Uh, DC gal, lady in the flowers. 
Fascinating. Oh, that's this pretty is cool. like really it has cool. Like Mona Lisa vibe to it, it almost. Say eh? like really Mona Lisa like. Like this is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I I personally want to see. I like how somebody posted the original images. Yeah. Because yeah. I want to see kind of what yeah, I wanna, what amount yeah. of work was done to this. Yeah, I'd love to see like the original behind it too. Uh, but yeah, no, it turned out really cool. Could you zoom up like a, even closer, maybe around that face? Oh yeah. Probably like. Mm -hmm. There might be a little overlay and it, stuff you were Yeah, doing. it'd almost be nice to bring out the face even more, like the eyes. The eyes okay. are always what capture kind of that that human-like feel, right? And when you kind of hide them and have the nose and the face, it still gives you like a face kind of vibe, but it doesn't give you that true, like, you know, mm -hmm. that true face. Because you could, if you brought up the eye, even just a little highlight yeah. or something. Yeah, I yeah, think it's yeah, good. yeah, a little highlight would be cool too. Yeah. yeah, really well done though. And like the highlight could be like a leaf or yeah. something. Yeah. Oh yeah, easily. Yep. You could even make the eyes like two <clears throat> big trees, right? I would love to see this printed out like on a wall. This oh is yeah. A great. Oh yeah. Sort of wall art image. It's kind of like. Okay, that. so Jennifer, Jennifer Thompson, is this yours? Are you DC gal? Lady in the Flowers. We'd love to hear more about yeah, it. Feel free really to good. chime in and say what you did or didn't do and whatever. But it's certainly fantastic color wise. Yeah. Color wise too. A lot of yeah. like a little highlight here. This like focuses yeah, that's in this like, area. Yeah. So it's like this. This. The sun's coming mm -hmm. from above and down. Very cool. Are those all separate? Uh, I wonder if they're all separate, like little bushes and everything like that, right? Because they yeah. look all all different. <clears throat> Looks cool though. Oh, they are all separate. Well, no, the oh. chat's a little bit oh, delayed, oh, okay. so unless she read okay. our mind. <laughs> <laughs> she never <laughs> But would love to hear yeah. as, as much, like, if it, if it was separate or whatever. Jennifer, explain away. We are fascinated. You did an excellent job. You get yeah. all the stars. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, and Nels, here we go. Liz. Okay. Yeah, it looks like this is yeah. one image and this is another one. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. I like the color. Yeah, that's a lot. A lot. Yeah, I'm pretty. I, I like it, it a is. lot. <laughs> I, will, I will stop. I'm sorry, Gus. Oh, puns are accepted at all times. <laughs> Help us all. The amount of puns. <laughs> Good job. Love love the texture. I'd say yeah. if anything, like try not to ever like divide something down the middle. But since yeah. you have so much blurring and stuff, yeah. it's good. Anel, you're doing a great job. Manav, we Whoa. get it. You're good. Manav, we get it. Now you're just showing off. <laughs> you're just showing off. And I love it. Yeah, it looks really good. Uh, <clears throat> he, he's always into that whole space uh, theme kind of imagery. Okay. Uh, he has the yeah. whole space theme. Does a really sharp I job. Love, I, love yeah. how, I love how he left space <clears throat> up here, by the way, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, right? Like, just g g gives room for just the eye to mystery. wander yeah. and gives it breathing room, if I, you will. I love the, the focal point of it. Like, Literally, you know exactly what you were looking for this, right away. This would be like, less interesting if it was centered, right? Oh, if yeah. It moved yeah. up and then, like, no, it wouldn't be yeah. as interesting. This, like, um, gives us a, this expanse to it. Well, so. Yeah, you did a very good job. We get it. Manav, you're good at what you do. <laughs> you killed it. Leslie Higgins, into it. Although I would not necessarily do this. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> This looks like a horrible idea. Yeah, just, Don't try this. It's yeah. only Photoshop. Yeah. You have to put like warning, Photoshop in yeah. like the bottom corner. <laughs> Don't want to give anybody an idea. This is good. I mean, a little bit yeah. of a shadow here. Probably get rid of that yeah. glow, you know, blend yeah, it get, in more. Get rid of those, uh, the blending. Uh, what, the what would you advise here? Because obviously what's happening here is just a transparency change. Mm -hmm. She just said, hey, I'm going to make this like 80% transparent or whatever. I would, well, see like that, the transparency actually works like okay. Um, personally, I just use like the hue and saturation by put it light and dark, but it needs to be smaller. Smaller. It's, they're more it's further in the background back. and they're Assuming, further back. Yeah. yeah. And I think what's also missing is everything is like, you know, whatever, 50% yeah. transparent. Yeah. It should be lighter. I feel like it should be lighter on this side and maybe darker. Yes. And like there needs to be a little bit of variation to sell it rather than it just looking like 50% transparent. It's almost transparent. like they're in, in the mist a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But good job. Yeah. yeah you're doing great. Yeah. Doing killer. Everybody's like so fantastic. Wow. We got a lot. What is this? Manav's showing off again. We, I don't know. I think some of this yeah. obviously was done prior to today, unless yeah, unless I there's that, 15 Manavs working away. Yeah, I think if there's really one person, but still, good job. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 
kind of an interesting perspective. Yeah. Uh, Wicker Whoa. Brain Pan. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just, this is weird. Is that tree photoshopped in there too? No, that was that was already there. Yeah, was already it there. looks it does it look sharper. Kind of, yeah. It looks sharper than the other. Like this part was like I don't know sharpened somehow. So yeah. yeah. Boy oh boy, so what I would, are you? I would be scared if I saw those yeah. things floating around. I'm like, how do you? I love I love how he did the depth though. He did the, the or she he yeah. or she did that small mm -hmm. uh, one in the background. Yeah. So you're creating That's a that good... that distance. This it's really nice. Yeah, that works out well. Uh, Caspian Wolf, we've seen theirs. Good job as well. Yeah, it's cool. Yep, yeah, it's a cool one. Little green ring into it, probably made today. Floating. So this is good again, just like mm -hmm. the blacks probably need to match up a little bit more. Highlights on top. And again, then because the cars. Yeah, exactly. And the, the highlight will make it so this person doesn't get lost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Brings you out a little bit more. Highlight one side and. And uh, yeah, uh, Carmen Chung. Okay, first time. Welcome, Carmen. First time using a Discord two-part project. Looks like we have yeah two different designs. Let's take a look. Again, I don't. Let's check. Not done today. So these were not done today, by the way. But still oh, okay. cool. Yeah, still pretty yeah. cool. Good job. Canada represent. Right? Mm hmm. Gotta, gotta represent Canada. Oh, there's a Represent. No... Yeah, there's... <laughs> love it. I love the, the subtle leaf in the corner because if you look at like every Canadian product out there, it's always the full leaf. It's, they never just do like half and yeah, like, let you. Like, show some subtlety. Yeah, yeah you know, show uh, my, give yeah. me. Let me complete the other side of the image mm -hmm. myself in my head. <laughs> it's always the full leaf on absolutely everything. I mean, I was just like. Just knocking things yeah. out. These are the originals. So good job matching that up. Here's the other piece. Oh. Taking this from day to night was mm -hmm. certainly a challenge. So I oh, appreciate yeah, for you. Sure. Always love seeing like the originals yeah. and then what it takes. The originals is definitely uh <sighs> so some edits from from Sam's that looks like it was actually not necessarily from today, but let's kinda go over these last two. This one looks awesome. I don't know what the original looks like. No. Cool. Definitely something that I would put on a uh, on a cart. <laughs> Maybe, on a card? yeah, send yeah. it to your families and stuff like that. Like, yeah, greetings from camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. It's like help, mom, <laughs> with a bunch of weird kids. <laughs> uh, dad, dado potential. This is our last one, and we are kind of Ooh, wrapping up that? now. Um, again, oh, this really mm, cool. Probably maybe was not done today. I don't know. Mm. Don't know any of the background background, but. Looks way cool. Yeah, it looks really good. It looks like color. 3D almost. Like 3D elements. This is a case where I'd want to know how it was made. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I would want to know how this is made too. It's, it's pretty cool. And I love that it's type focused. Mm -hmm. uh, normally with uh, compositions and stuff like that, not a, there's not much type focused work. I think he or she is doing a good job mm -hmm. of showing how the light's interacting with oh, yeah. the elements around it. Yeah. But it's easy. It's very evident with um, neon and glowing lights yeah. and things. It's evident. Mm. Well, I like what you're doing is much more subtle because you're like, hey, this physical red object is producing a bounce color onto this other object. Yeah. And oh, yeah. you are dealing with it in such a subtle way. But this definitely like sells. Yeah, I like the uh, the glow of the the pink and blue around the, the sign. It's great really, great yeah. use of color, too. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, definitely a great use of loving color. Loving it. Okay, last one, always finally. Always just that pink and, and blue, though. It always looks so good together. It does. Like, I'm really yeah, into it. Yeah. They're like pink and kind mm. of tealish blue. That's pretty cool. This is our last one. We'll review more in, a, in the next se segment as well, but we're kind of wrapping up now. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. And I, I would have made the, the, the people like a little bit bigger, right? Because you're still going through a house. So those people would still be that that natural size almost. So yeah. having them paddle through there's, there. There's no way they're reaching a door. Yeah, to get no, through any no, of these. no, no, no. <laughs> or, or are they just further back? Because maybe if they move them back relative in size, yeah. would they be? Or what? Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you, if you were to keep it, it almost looked like... Was the original picture them already paddling to that island and maybe they added the room around it? That's mm -hmm. what I'm assuming that that's how it was done. It's always cool yeah. figuring out how people do things. I had 
I'll guess all a, a bunch of different techniques, but mm -hmm. it's always going to be different. Yeah, you do it, and then just work on the. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some reflection of the, you know. Yeah, walls and wall coloring, and uh, your uh, chandelier would be probably at the top there. Yeah. But very cool. So many we reviewed. I'm yeah, gonna stop right crazy. there. You know, nice. you know, we don't. We're running out of time. It was yeah. your first day, and I feel like Thanks. so many, so <laughs> many entries. Uh, super happy to see this. Super happy to have you here today. Yeah. Sean Reichen's very first day. Thank you, Sean, over coming. Even you said you're a little anxious, have some anxiety oh, yeah. about this sort of thing. And oh, yeah. I, I think I speak for everybody when I say that you just cannot tell. You're like. Easy to work with and just oh my hands are so sweaty. Fun to, like, <laughs> Literally, shaking. like that's what happens all the time. You're like, <laughs> but I'm I'm not like I I don't have like the communication kind of anxiety, so I don't I'm not antisocial when it comes down to it. I'm able to talk to people and communicate, but yeah, I won't be looking at them like staring directly in their eyes and probably talking mm -hmm. to them at all times. I'll look down here and there, okay. but that's just because there's stuff going on in the head, right? Yeah. So. Anxiety um, gets you, gets the best of you, but gets you to yeah. San Francisco too. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Good way to end it. Everybody stick around. We have the WXD challenge climbing up with Melody and another guest this afternoon. So thanks so much, everybody. We'll see Sean tomorrow as well. See you guys tomorrow. Yeah.